you are keeping good and you are going good with chemistry as well. So uh, let's start with our video for today. We will be learning something about the molecular orbital theory and the molecular orbital approach. So let's start with the molecular orbital approach. An electron actually may be considered either as a particle or a wave. So that means we, in other words, we can say that an electron has a dual nature. So the dual nature of electron is considered over here of electron, wherein it can behave as a particle as well as it possesses the wave nature also. Right. So, uh, in other words, an electron in an atom may therefore be described as occupying an atomic orbital or by a wave function which is represented by the symbol psi, right, which is actually a solution to the Schrodinger wave equation. Now, the electrons in a molecule, they are present in molecular orbitals. So the wave function which describes a molecular orbital may be obtained by either of the one of the procedures that is the first it can be linear combination of atomic orbitals okay and in other uh, approach it can be united it is called as united atom method so uh, if following either of the two approaches or the two of the either of the two procedures we can obtain the uh, wave function for the molecular orbital fine so let's start with the linear combination of atomic orbitals linear combination of atomic orbitals now this is very simple as the name suggests linear combination okay so here we will have a combination of two or more things okay of what that comes in the second part of the name atomic orbitals so here what will be happening actually the atomic orbitals will be undergoing combination different different combinations will be there and this is how we will get the molecule this is how the molecule formation will be taking place Okay, to understand this, uh, now let us consider two atoms. Let's say uh, I have, I take hydrogen atom. So this is one of my hydrogen atom, hydrogen atom HA. And this is another hydrogen atom. This is uh, represented by HB. Now, uh, the atomic orbitals of this A hydrogen atom I represented by the symbol psi and I name it as, label it as psi A. Okay, so the wave function psi a it represents the atomic orbitals of the a hydrogen atom, and the wave function psi b it represents the uh, atomic wave function of the atomic orbitals of b hydrogen atom. Okay, now if the electron clouds of these two atoms they overlap when the atoms approach each other, then the wave function for the molecule it will be given by psi a b. Okay, so the wave function of the molecule is represented by psi AB, wherein by the linear combination of atomic orbitals, the molecular wave function psi AB can be given as a mathematical expression of n times C1 psi A plus C2 psi B. Okay, now what are these C1 and C2? Okay, and n of course, n actually is the normalizing constant which is taken into the expression wherein i want that or i want to express that the electron density in a particular region of the space of that molecule which is uh, formed which is getting formed is maximum and that maximum value is unity okay so i want i want that the electron that occupies uh, a particular region of the space of the molecule which is getting formed and that is the maximum value which is the unity so i represent it by a constant that is normalizing constant denoted by capital n now the c1 and c2 terminologies over here they actually uh, are taken into into consideration which shows that uh, my molecule which is getting formed which is represented by the wave function psi ab this molecule should be stable enough 
Okay. Now, how to incorporate that stability into my mathematical expression? Of course, when the molecule will be stable enough, highly stable, it will possess the minimum energy. So that minimum energy is contributed by the two constants, C1 and C2. Okay, so C1 and C2 are basically constants which assures that the minimum energy is acquired by this molecule AB which is getting formed. Now, if I square, I take this equation and I square both sides of the equation square on the left hand side also and square on the right hand side also. So what do I get? I get psi square AB is equal to what? C1 square psi A square plus C2 square psi B square plus 2 C1 C2 psi A psi B. Okay. Now, and since it was one unity, so it goes off. C1 square psi A square, this represents the probability of finding the electron in an isolated atom A. Similarly, C2 square psi B square, it represents the probability of finding an electron in an isolated atom B. That means, for example, if this is atom B, so whenever we have the isolated atom B, the probability of finding an electron in a particular region of the space this is given by C2 square psi B square. Okay. Similarly, we have C1 square psi A square. Now, the third term which is introduced, which is coming over here is important. What does it signify? It signifies the overlap integral. It is called as overlap integral and it signifies that uh, as to, to what extent the overlapping has taken place. Okay, so greater the value of this term that is 2 twice of C1, C2, Psi A, Psi B, twice of C1, C2, Psi A, Psi B. This is called as overlap integral and it tells us the extent of overlapping which has taken place. In other words, it also tells us about the strength of the bond which is getting formed by the overlapping of atomic orbitals, right? So this is called as overlap integral. Okay, now let's uh, study about the different combinations that occur by, during the overlapping of atomic orbitals. Now let's, uh, now for that sake, we start with the S orbital. I have two atomic orbitals. Let's say this is atom A. Uh, if you want to take any specific atom, we can take hydrogen, which is one of the simplest atom. Okay. And this is 1S uh, or let's say the S orbital of one of the atom. And it overlaps with 1S orbital or the S orbital of another atom, which is referred to as B over here. Okay. Now, when such type of overlapping occurs definitely the atomic orbitals will come closer to one another okay and the electron density will be undergoing overlap okay so what will happen let's see before coming to the conclusion as to what will happen we need to see one basic feature what is the phase of these atomic orbitals what is the symmetry of these atomic orbitals? Now, suppose uh, for atom A, I mark the phase as with plus sign. And for atom B, I mark it with the minus sign. Okay. That means these two atomic orbitals, they are not in the same phase. Remember, plus and minus here have nothing to do with the addition or subtraction. Neither they have anything to do with the charges, electrical charges. No, not at all. They simply denote the symmetry of the orbitals. Okay, they simply tell us as to what is the phase of that particular atomic orbitals. Okay, so this is one of the conditions wherein the two atomic orbitals, they do not have the same phase. Let's see another condition that arises and then we will come to what will happen. What will be the future 
of these overlappings. Okay, now these two s orbitals with their respective atoms, nuclei, come closer and in this case, they have similar symmetry or they have similar phase which I have represented or marked it with a plus sign. This comes to be the second condition. So in other words, uh, whenever any two atoms, they combine together, then two combinations of wave functions are possible, the first and second. Now, what are these two combinations? Obviously, when the signs of the two wave functions are the same as is occurring in case of the second combination. And the other one is when the signs are different. That means the phases are different. Now, when the phases are same, then what will be the resultant? If you remember the wave theory, whenever you have two different waves, okay, let's say A and B. So, this is A and B this will be wave B. If I ask you or if somebody asks you to give the uh, addition, uh, additive uh, uh, resultant of these two waves, what do you do? Since they lie in the same phase, obviously the resultant of addition will be a great, somewhat greater magnitude. Okay, so this will give me A plus B. So that is the same thing happening over here. These two atomic orbitals, they lie in the same phase. The resultant will be obviously somewhat, uh, somewhat with a greater magnitude. And how do we represent it? It is represented like this. Okay. The two nuclei I have marked with a solid circle. And yes, of course, this portion of the molecule will be having the maximum probability of locating the electron whereas the probability of locating an electron it decreases as you move further away from the two nuclei right so this particular uh, orbital which is getting formed it is called as bonding molecular orbital okay so molecular orbital and what type of molecular orbital? Bonding molecular orbital. And these are the atomic orbitals on the left hand side. Okay. Now let's come to the other situation wherein the two atomic orbitals, they do not lie in the same phase. Again, you come to the wave theory. I have two waves. Wave, uh, this is A. Okay. And here it goes like this. And another wave that I have is not lying in the same phase oh my god so it becomes a bit peculiar over here so what will be the resultant obviously it will if you try to add b to a what will happen the b is not in the same phase so it will be somewhat like this the resultant will be a very very meager in magnitude Okay, same concept is applied here. When the two orbitals, they do not lie in the same phase, then my resultant, my dear, will be somewhat like this, okay, with its nuclei. Uh, since it was plus on the left side, I write plus over here. And the same thing over on the right hand side with the nuclei. And since it was minus on the right hand side over here, I write minus over here. So we get a structure which actually looks like two lobes. Okay. And such type of molecular orbital that is formed, it is called as anti-bonding molecular orbital. Right. So in short, what we can say, we can say that when the two atomic orbitals they lie in the same phase then what do they they result into they result into bonding molecular orbital okay and when they do not lie in the same phase or let's say they lie in the different phases then the type of molecular orbital that is formed is called as anti-bonding molecular orbital Okay, now you can see the structural de uh, details of these molecular orbitals and you can note down the difference also. In case of antibonding molecular orbitals, there is the region of the space, this portion. 
here you do not find any of the electron remember i have marked the electrons boundary with the solid line so this portion of the orbital wherein zero electron density is observed it is called as node it is referred to as node okay and the plane carrying this node what will be it called as that will be called as nodal plane that is called as nodal plane so this is how linear combination of s atomic orbitals it occurs so definitely there is one of the factor which is governing their orbital overlapping and that is the phase of the atomic